Joining us today is the owner of Anti-Job University, who teaches students entrepreneurship through asset ownership. Unchaining from his job as a St. Louis mobile driver, he delved face first into the world of real estate and online marketing to make money. Fast forward to 2023, he owns an online education platform, affiliate network, marketing agency, and more. His passion is to teach entrepreneurs everywhere to free themselves by deploying their own asset empires to never struggle financially again. So guys, help me and welcome our guest today, the one and only Yasriel. Hi Yasriel, welcome to the show. Hello, hello, and thank you for that awesome introduction. That was great. Because you are awesome and I can't wait to hear about your story and what you do today and how are you helping entrepreneurs. But before we delve into the how and the nitty gritty, tell us what asset ownership really means. Okay. Um, well, it's a saying that I always say to people. I say, if you don't have no cash yet, it's because you don't own no assets. Um, assets, we, we know of assets like real estate. But we're not familiar with a lot of digital assets. Uh, but majority of the internet is comprised of them. Everything we're using, we use Zoom, uh, we use Fiber. Someone owns the asset. When you combine people with an asset, you never have to worry about money again. Uh, for example, if you were to create a niche social network, let's say that you uh, you have a community of podcast owners okay and you just wanted to share uh sensitive information with them maybe you have a list of two to three thousand of them you could have your own little mini social network you can monetize it with ads you can monetize it with offers you can monetize it with courses but you own this asset so what i do is i teach people to create like a moat around themselves of many little assets to create passive income streams um, so that they don't have to worry about active income all the time. Wow. Okay. So what is the perfect um, monetizable digital asset? Because most of my listeners, they are entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs, especially and coaches and consultants. Um, so what is the, you know, the perfect monetizable digital asset or business model that an entrepreneur should create or own first? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. It's so many of them, but I would say the perfect business model or asset that anybody, no matter what industry you're in, it, it, it kind of feels like it's a disservice if you don't own your own affiliate network or referral program. Uh, reason being is because you provide income for people that might not want to start their own business and you can reach more people. Uh, I believe in biblical business principles and even Christ himself, even though he was the most powerful man to ever walk the earth, he recruited 12 people to help him spread his message throughout the four corners of the earth. So you position yourself to leverage others to profit recycle. So when you're uh, building an affiliate network, you're positioning yourself differently in a niche, in an industry. Like I call it a, a the best business card ever. If we were going into some type of conference and I was just a digital marketer and I wanted to work with clients or something, if I walked up and I said, hey, I, I'll do your Facebook ads, they heard that before. If I walk up, I say, I'll do your SEO, they heard that before. But if they know I have an affiliate network full of trained affiliates that will use their own time, effort, money, know-how, uh, accounts, and everything to bring themselves with no risk, that is the best asset of all time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that's why I believe affiliate networks are the best assets to build because it's like the ultimate form of leverage. I'm obsessed with leverage. Yeah, I love that. So because the question that a lot of people ask is that do I have do I need to have a huge following on social media in order to become quote unquote successful, right? So do people really need to have a huge following to monetize their digital asset, you know, anything in or to get into to grow their affiliate network? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because remember, you start off with your unique positioning. 
You don't have to have a network. As you guys can see, I'm practicing what I preach. This is my first time meeting this lovely young lady right here. First, I position myself. I have something unique. I have something that can help a wide range of people. And then I proceeded to leverage others. This is where you, uh, you know, partake in things like interviews, collaborations, uh, shout outs, joint ventures, mergers, uh, building communities. And, and maybe you don't have that audience. Mm -hmm. This is what I tell people to do. When you read the scriptures, Christ didn't have an audience. All right. He was sent here with a gift, with a purpose. He was positioned as the only, the only what? Only begotten son, right? So he was unique. He had a gift and people saw that, but he still didn't have any followers. But he knew that nobody would listen to him because he didn't have the ear of the people yet. So what did he do? He was like, hmm, I have a cousin named John the Baptist. Even though he's not as powerful as me, he's way more known. He has an audience. Everybody went to John the Baptist to get baptized. All right. So he was trusted and well known throughout the land and everything. So Christ went to his cousin and said, hmm, uh, why don't you baptize me? Pretty much like an endorsement. So I don't know you guys. I don't know Joy's audience. So I'm coming to her. I'm like, Joy, why don't you baptize me or introduce me to your audience? Because she's already spent time building trust. She already has authority with you guys. So by me being associated with her, it automatically builds trust with you guys because she wouldn't recommend anyone harmful to you guys. You see what I'm saying? So Christ went to him. And as soon as he went to him, the spotlight was on him. All the people wanted to follow Christ. They left their entire lives behind. They had businesses. I know that the fake movies teach you that they were broke and all of that. No, the disciples, they all had businesses. They had families and they left everything to follow this man. All right. So this is what I teach. I teach you to position yourself, then to leverage others. So I'm, I'm doing podcast interviews. I'm doing radio interviews. I'm doing magazine blog post interviews and all. I'm leveraging others who might have a bigger following or, or more audiences so that I can reach more with my message of asset ownership. Yeah. And I imagine people who are listening to this right now, watching this right now, they might be thinking, okay, because I, I, I'm a confidence coach and visibility coach for um, for entrepreneurs and most of them are struggling with imposter syndrome it's like who am i to reach out to these people who are more established or who has more following who is more successful than me and who am i to reach out to them and ask them to promote me right so how do you deal with the imposter syndrome um, effect on things well you shouldn't have imposter syndrome uh because everybody was sent here with something this is not your first time just like it's not their first time. God sent you here uh, full of a gift. Our job in our lifetime is to figure out what that gift is. Christ, he remembered everything from heaven. But when we came here through the sin of Eve, we don't remember what we were sent here for. So we were born into the flesh and we don't remember our gift, but you have one, just like that person who you're trying to leverage. So once you discover your gift, you, you can't focus on imposter syndrome. You have a duty to to get your message out no matter what. You have to be relentless. Uh, the scripture says the hand of the diligent shall be made fat. That means you shall be made rich. If you're diligent and fervent in business and you go hard and you do God's work, which is as long as your gift lines up with the laws, he will give you the desires of your heart. So the imposter syndrome that comes from you not knowing for sure if that's your gift. Your gift doesn't require you to have to do it for five years. Your gift doesn't require you to get some degree from some institution that just made up some paperwork. All right. Your gift is something that you give to others that you will be rewarded from. You see what I'm saying? So once you discover that you head out into the field. That's your duty. The scripture says uh, uh, to him that knows to do good and does not do good, it is it is sin. So if you can help people 
and you hold back from that, you hesitate just because you don't think you're on a some type of level, you're actually hurting people. Somebody out there that don't care if you have the credentials that all, all they care about is if you can help them. And you're saying, no, nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to help them because I'm, I'm not on that level yet. Right. So that that's wrong. Just do what you have to do. Don't worry about imposter syndrome. OK. Well, I love that. So how did you personally find your own gift and how did you get started with this business right now? Or other, you know, you're managing a lot of different businesses right now. How did you get started? It's been a long road. Uh, like you said, 2014, I quit my nine to five job. Uh, I was a truck driver. I, I've been working since I was 13 years old. And I just never, as you can see, the name of the company is Anti-Job. It yeah. used to be called Alpha Job, but I wanted <laughs> to be a little bit more mature. So we had to rebrand things. But I never liked. I don't I don't like being someone else's leverage. You understand? Uh, the scripture talks about you putting the king over yourself that's not your brethren. Like, so you're not really supposed to, you're not, you weren't sent here to be enslaved by some, some corporation or something. You were sent here to serve God with, through your purpose and your gift. He said, feed my flock. So I realized that, like, I, it's just always been something in me throughout all of my jobs. I would go to these jobs, I would clock in, and I would look at the elderly there, and and I could see myself in them, pause, and it would it would scare me, and I would quit. I would just quit every time I would see somebody that was 40 or 50 years old, and I would just think that they were probably there when they were 24 or 20 and I'm like, no, like that can't be, that can't be my end. That can't be my end. The scripture says, let your light so shine before men. The scripture says that your gift will bring you before kings and great men. If I'm working at Walmart or McDonald's, that's I'm never going to be fitting what that scripture says. And I think about this and I want everybody that's watching this to think about this too or listening to this. It was a commercial back in the 90s. It, it was a very popular uh, pizza. It was called Tombstone Pizza. I don't know if y'all remember that, but it used to say, what do you want on your tombstone? They were talking about toppings. But when I think of that, I think about my gravestone. When you go to the cemetery, you it, it's, it's so difficult to find your relatives. Not because they weren't important to you, but because they didn't become the beacon that God told them to become. If you go to Seattle, you know exactly where Bruce Lee is buried. Why? Because he fulfilled his purpose in the amount of time that he was sent here. Your life is not fulfilled based off of how many years you were here. It is fulfilled based off of what you did with your gift while you were here. So when I think about my gravestone, I can't let it say that I, I was I just worked at McDonald's or I just worked at Metro or I just drove the bus. It can't say that it has to say something that helped people. It has to say something that will will uh, uh, be passed down for generations and generations. The scripture says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That means people that I've never met before should still be eating off of this interview that we're having right now. You see what I'm saying? So I couldn't stay at a job and I don't think anybody should. If Listen, there are some people that aren't going to wake up. You know what I'm saying? That's why they call it a matrix. Some people are just not going to wake up. They don't want to be entrepreneurs. They're afraid of it. They have lack of faith. All of that extra stuff. They're going to make a million excuses. Oh, that's for you guys. Everybody's not cut out for that. That's a lie. Anybody can do this. Um, and I'm not just saying that by opinion. I'm saying that by law. Before I move on, let me just please say this. I pray not to offend anybody, but God is my lawyer. So this ain't hate speech is great speech. I only speak biblical business principles. I only speak formulas and laws. I don't speak just opinion. I know that anybody can do this because the scripture says it. Now, whether you believe in God or not, even the devils of the world use the Bible to build their corporations. 
Even the devils of the world study King Solomon, which is the richest man of all time. He makes Jeff Bezos look like he's on welfare. OK, so if you want to know how to uh, make money, whether you believe or not, you need to be studying this book, not some guru, not even just me or anything. The scripture says. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's why if you go and you watch my videos on Anti-Job University, you notice every time I say something, I back it up with a scripture. Right. Because I don't want to be left out there of a vulnerable for attack. All right. That's why I say God is my lawyer. So if you guys are in a nine to five job right now or if you're just struggling in entrepreneurship and you might think this is for you. No, 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 no. What you need to do is you need to take some time. You need to scratch off everything on your schedule for a month if you if you can. And you need to create leverage hours. All right. What I do in the morning, I get up at three. I can't help it. All right. From three to nine. Those are my leverage hours. The scripture talks about sharpening your axe before you try to chop down a tree. I'm pretty sure you might have heard of that before. If like if you if you have a dull axe and you're trying to chop down the tree, you're going to have to chop all day. But if you spend more time just sharpening your axe, you only have to swing a couple times. Right. So if you're having trouble making money, sharpen your axe, sharpen your skill set. Sharpen your mindset. And then when you go and act, you won't have to do too much. So from the hours of 3 a.m. to 9 a.m., those are my leverage hours. I create assets and I create partnerships. That's it. Assets, partnerships. OK, platform. Who has an audience that I can promote this platform? Platform. Who has an audience? Course. Who has an audience? Book. Who has an audience? That's all I do. And that's all you guys have to do. You don't have to know all of the super technical extra stuff. There are people that have spent time building up audiences that are perfect for whatever product or service that you have. Why do you need this? People always say, oh, you, can, you have to start somewhere. Why does that mean you have to start at the bottom? How come you can't start at the top? Nothing. Like that's just so they think so little. Of it. Oh, you have to start. Some, that, it doesn't mean you have to start at the bottom. When I think of a when I create a book. First of all, I'm going to prove the market like, OK, I know the pain points. I know that people can be helped with something. OK, so now I can get a book and a course out of this. Now I go and start my search of people who has an audience. The scripture talks about how Christ spake openly into the world, how he spoke in front of thousands and thousands of people. He didn't gather those people. Those people were already gathered and he they were just sitting there ripe for the picking, just ready for his message. And he stood in front of them, spoke and they converted themselves. So it's exactly what I'm doing right now, guys. Some of you are going to hear this. Others are going to be like, ah, uh, you know, whatever, you know, but that's fine. Right. You know what I'm saying? But this is what you do, guys. You create your asset and then you leverage others and then you profit recycle. That's it. That is one of the most powerful speeches that I have ever heard on this interview. So thank you so much. Wow. It really wakes me up, you know, because it's my morning and it really gives me so much motivation right now. And so I want to go back to something that you said earlier is about law, because I know you also created two famous, your famous two laws of success formula. So can you share that with us and break it down for us? Yes, ma'am. I can. And do you mind if I call you ma'am? Because I know you're young, but yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. Um. Well, actually, it's it's three. Well, two okay. are formulas, and then one is a law. Do you mind? Go ahead. Okay. So, so the first formula. This is very simple. So even if you're just fresh out of a nine to five job, you never heard of this make money online stuff. You never did real estate or lead generation or anything. This is going to be simple. Notice I said simple. I didn't say easy. I said simple. There's a difference. Okay. A relevant traffic plus irresistible offer equals money. OK, I repeat that relevant traffic plus irresistible offer equals money. OK, so when I say relevant traffic, 
Just think of people. Think of audience. OK, so this is people are an audience who is perfect for whatever product I have. OK, so you don't want to just be selling to just anybody, just random people. OK, so relevant people. All right. Now, plus irresistible offer. So if they're relevant people, that means they were already in the market to buy whatever you have or something. All right. So now the next part of that is the irresistible offer. I mean, almost self-explanatory, but the irresistible offer is a formula in itself. You want to make a bold claim or a statement that will take them away from pain points or towards pleasure. Then the next step of that is to offer stack. These offerings will be the things that fulfill the pain pleasure thing. And then is the call to action. OK, so, for example, I have the asset empire. OK, the asset empire, of course, yes, is three thousand dollars. Yes, <laughs> but I have the asset empire course. Right. So one of my irresistible offers is you're going to get three to five monetized assets that you own. They don't, they're going to be built out for you. You don't have to build them yourself. Uh, you're going to have full ownership. On top of that, they're going to have instant monetization. On top of that, every assignment that you complete inside the Asset Empire course, you receive cash back. There's never been a course like that before. Usually they just take your money and they're just happy. Me, we give you money back every time you complete one of the assignments. All right. We also give you money when you leave reviews as well. So it's just all of these different offer stacks. And then we do the risk reversal. So the risk reversal is if you don't make money or if you don't get uh, uh, results by what the second week. Let me go to it. I don't want to freestyle. I have some like you said, I got so much. I don't want to I don't want to freestyle. OK. All right. It says if <laughs> it says if you don't receive first week results. Uh, no excuses. We'll grant you 50 percent off all other courses, masterminds, et cetera, for life. So that's the last part of that formula, the risk reversal, because most people, they're thinking like, oh, if this doesn't work, then like, yep. uh, like you know, you come out on top. No, no, no. We want to make sure you know that we're going to take a blow, too. So now we're incentivized to get you the greatest results and everything. So that's the. The uh, the first formula, you know, relevant traffic plus irresistible offer equals money. Now, next is positioning plus leverage equals profit recycling. So we talked about that one earlier. Positioning what? Positioning yourself or your product. What do I mean by positioning? Well, your unique proposition, your unique value. All right. Everybody has a course. Everybody has a book. Everybody has a movie. Everybody has a song. Why should th your positioning should answer? Why should they buy from you? Why should they choose you? Um, I don't know if you guys know J. Cole, the, the rapper out there. Uh, when he first came out, he rapped just like Jay-Z. And everybody else was impressed by this. But not me. I was I always said, well, I mean, if I want to hear Jay-Z, I'll just go get his album. That's the same thing. You walk in the store, you go on the aisle, you look on a shelf. There are a whole bunch of different brands selling the same thing. What makes you choose a specific brand? Why should you choose them? Now, you don't want it to be by price. Yep. This is why I tell you guys to sharpen your skill set. Should practice, just practice every day, just creating offers, creating irresistible offers. Look at your competitors and see what you can do to cut their legs out from under them. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, if if you're a universe, if you're a university and you notice that Harvard University, they makes the bulk of their money off of tuition. Well, how can you figure out other ways of monetization where you can offer tuition free? Now, even though Harvard has a bigger name, some of their, those students will slide off to you because they don't want to be in debt after school. For example, when anti-job rebranding is done, everything is going to be free in our school. That's going to slice off a lot of the market because they're not going to be able to figure out how to do that without going out of business. 
right? So that is unique positioning. So you position yourself or your product or service. The next step of that is leveraging. Leveraging what? Leveraging others. You can leverage others, anything, their credit. You can leverage others' money. You can leverage their audiences. You can leverage their uh, social security. You can leverage, you can leverage. Okay, so in this position, I'm leveraging an audience right now, the asset empire, guys. So it can reach more people. My audience is on a certain level, but then it's other people that have other audiences. One person I like is Grant Cardone. Um, not all the time, but I like one of the things that he said. Uh, people ask him, hey, you're rich already. Why do you keep marketing and advertising and stuff? He said there's 7 billion people in the world and everybody don't know my name yet. Yeah. Now, that's the truth. When 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 Christ was here, before he left, well, you know, first, he, did you know that he created the first ever network marketing or MLM? No. Nope. Did you know that? He did. No, well, think about this. Watch. All right. So after he was baptized by his cousin, the 12 disciples, they recruited themselves in. What did he do? He taught them what he knew. Isn't that what you do in network marketing? You, you recruit someone, then you teach them how to heal. You teach them how to sell. So he taught them how to recruit more people into following Christ and following God. And then before he left, before he put his business on autopilot, he gave them a message. He said, now go out into all nations and teach them the same message and bring in more disciples. That's the first ever. And I told you biblical business principles. That's the first ever MLM ever. Right. So. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's just move on. Let's just move on. I get excited when I talk <laughs> about this stuff now. All right. So the last part is profit recycling. So this is where you get to uh, throw fuel on a fire. So maybe you got the first few interviews or collaborations for cheap or for free or something. But now, since you made money from those initial ones, you take a little bit of money from that and you throw it to bigger audiences and, and, and find bigger ways of positioning. You put it back into your features. Now, when you go back on those old podcasts, you have new features to discuss and talk to about the audiences that you uh, were introduced to before and everything. So it just is a flywheel that just feeds itself. You see? So it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. I love it. Okay. I love okay. it. It's so, <laughs> so, and so valuable. Like things like, Things that I'm sure a lot of people have heard of before, you know, they already know, but it's sometimes you, you don't do what you know, right? We know we have to create an irresistible offer, but do you really have an irresistible offer right now? No, most people don't, right? This is why they're yeah. struggling with their business. They are not making money. Yeah. I always tell people, I always tell people, like, you can know everything all you want to. And I tell people, don't buy my course if you're going to treat it like YouTube. Mm. I had a couple of people, uh, they'll buy a course. And then they'll message us and they'll say, OK, I'm done watching the course. I'm like, what 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 does that mean? This is not YouTube. This is not Netflix. There is no cash in without action. There is no cash in without action. Like you have to do the scripture says by the most high actions are weighed. Like, he don't care about what you believe. I believe I manifest that I'm going to be a millionaire. No, you have to do something. It's OK to believe because if you don't believe, you're not going to do it. All right. So but but if you really believed, guess what? You would do it then. Right. right? So you definitely have to. You got to do it. Y'all Y'all got to do it. OK, go ahead. I'm sorry. I love that. No, I totally love that because I do all these things, manifestation or law of attraction or med meditation, right? Once I'm done with that, I take action, right? I take inspiration. Yeah, yeah. I do all that and do things, right? To make things happen. Yeah. We can't just wait here and wait for things to arrive at our doorstep. It's not going to happen. Um. So the last question that I want to ask you is about, I would say, you know, what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneur who are struggling right now? to achieve the success and they are considering giving up right now. What advice would you give them? What would you tell them? I would say, don't give up. You didn't do the last law. Which is? Okay, it's the law of profit. God's law of profit is in Genesis uh, 128. All right, that's at the beginning of the book. 
All right. But when we look at it, we think it's just talking about reproduction. It's not true. Watch this. Be fruitful. I know you heard of this. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. Let me break it down. Be fruitful. That means to innovate, produce, or create. At the beginning of the book, the first thing God told us about himself was that he was the creator. Right? And guess what? We were created in his image. So that means we're supposed to be what? Creators. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said, I told you I was going to prove that anybody can be an entrepreneur. If your father who art in heaven is a creator, that is what you're supposed to be. OK, he gave us dominion. We're supposed to rule. You're not supposed to be a servant. OK, so be fruitful. That means create something, create a product or a service, something that can benefit and help people. OK, multiply. How are you going to scale what you created? How are you going to multiply that? What systems are you going to do to where it can be easily uh, copied and duplicatable? All right. Now, the next step is to replenish the earth, figure out a rapid, seamless and massive distribution plan. This is what I'm doing exactly right now. I'm going from interview to interview to interview to audience to audience and audience for my massive distribution plan for Asset Empire. See, then subdue it. You're supposed to use this product or service to subdue, achieve market dominance, overpower the market by creating irresistible offers so unique that they cut the legs out from under anyone else that they can't replicate what you've done and survive, which makes you the only one customers can choose from uh, with your specific gift or service. Now, the last step is to have dominion. Now that you've made it clear that no one else is like you or can reverse engineer your unique offer, you monopolize. Seize complete takeover. Control how the market moves through market monopolies. So I have a book I'll give you guys for free. Uh, give You can give them my email. It is called Profit Positioning, Market Monop The Rise of the Market Monopolies. All right. Only versus best. All right. Uh, because you don't want to be the best. Everybody is trying to fight to be the best. It's way easier to just be the only. OK, like yeah. if, when you're the best is somebody in second place trying to get you all the time. Be the only. OK, so seize complete takeover. Control how the market moves through market monopolies to the point that all others are left trying to keep up and copy. Set new industry standards the same way that a new king establishes new rules and law. So when you have a market monopoly, you control what the average price or cost of things are. People don't have a choice but to buy from you. They can't say, oh, well, I'm sorry, that's too expensive. I can get that same thing from a dude down the street. Is no other course out here that teaches what Asset Empire teaches. So I can charge whatever I want. Those sheep will hear my voice. The people that want to work with me, they'll work with me. Right. But they're not going to be able to say, oh, I saw that somewhere before. I've done my work to be the only. And everybody listening right now or watching, I want you to do your work to be the only. I don't care if you're a plumber. How do you beef up your irresistible offer in your city to where no other plumber can be compared to you? Wow. Wow. I'm having goosebumps right now, especially the thing that you just said, don't be the best, be the only. Thank you so much for being here, joining us today for this interview and sharing all these golden nuggets with my listeners. Now tell my listeners where they can find you and thank you so much for offering the book. Now tell my listeners where they can find you online or learn more about you or join your programs. Um, Thank you. And I appreciate you for having me on. This was awesome. And I, I love being on here with you. All right. So you can find me. You can just follow me for free. Anti-Job University. That's the YouTube channel. Anti-Job University. No dashes. Anti-Job University on YouTube. Um, As far as the Asset Empire, you go to AssetEmpireAccess.site. And that's where you can join that program.
All right, no worries, guys. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes below. So make sure you visit the show notes and find all the resources and links that we have for you today. And I hope you learn a lot from today's episode and from our guests and find it extremely powerful and fascinating. If you have any questions, you know, please send us your message or leave a comment below and we will get back to you. And to connect with me, follow me on Instagram at Joan Chan Coaching for daily tips and insights on confidence and visibility. And remember to hit the subscribe button so you never miss another juicy episode. Thanks for tuning in today and until next time, keep showing up. Success doesn't show up for you until you show up and pursue your own success.